bajillion hours. Hello, my reinvented friends. Arlo here, and today we're reviewing Pokemon Legends Arceus. Over the last few years, I have firmly established myself as a Pokemon critic. I was positively obsessed with Pokemon when I was a preteen, but after only dabbling in the series as a young adult and ultimately putting the whole thing down for several years, I was disheartened to eventually return to the world of Pokemon and find that not all was well. Many fans felt that the series was stagnating, that Game Freak wasn't really trying all that hard anymore because their game seemed to sell regardless of what they did or didn't do. I felt that Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was fun enough but underwhelming as a modern HD remake of a Game Boy game and held back by baffling, though admittedly rather Nintendo-y, design decisions. Then Sword and Shield were even more disappointing. What should have been Pokemon's grand home console debut was instead a clear rush job with uneven graphics, an uninteresting world, a nearly non-existent story, a new concept that was good but not fully realized, and a heaping helping of controversy to sour the experience even further. And of course, more recently, the Diamond and Pearl remake, which to me felt like the ultimate low. An ugly, boring, minimum effort rush job cynically churned out to fill a holiday slot. It's hard to play a game like that and feel that there's any hope for the company behind it. And all the games I've mentioned sold so unbelievably well that there was little reason to believe the Pokemon company would ever alter course. However, in 2021, a spark of hope. They revealed Pokemon Legends Arceus. It was immediately clear that this was a different kind of Pokemon game. And the more we learned about it, the more likely it seemed that this could be something like the series refresh we've been waiting for. Of course, it takes a while for a burn to heal. Early footage of the game looked incredibly rough. And after Sword and Shield, I wasn't willing to muster anything more than cautious optimism. No, I would have to play the game myself before I could decide if this was a sign of hope for the Pokemon franchise. Well, I have now played it. A, a whole lot, actually. <laughs> and now it's time to decide if Pokemon Legends Arceus is the real deal, or if it's... Just, just another Pokemon game. Let's do this. A uh, whoa, 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 whoosh! When I booted up Legends Arceus, I actually expected a straightforward prequel, in a sense. A game that simply takes place in an earlier age of the Pokemon world. I was quite surprised to find that the player character comes from the modern era and is taken to the past via a space-time rift. Arceus sends them back and turns their cell phone into the Arc phone so the two of them can talk on the phone. It's literally a God phone where you talk to God. Hello, God. Thanks for creating the universe and stuff. By the way, can you tell me where I put my Nevermind shirt? I haven't been able to find it in ages. Anyway, the character is then found washed up on the beach where they're appropriately found by a Pokemon professor named Laventon and taken to Jubilife Village. If I might jump around a bit, in my Sword and Shield review, I talked about how there was a moment at the beginning of the game that really set the stage for me in a very negative way. A stadium is crowded with cheering people. One of the characters walks onto the field, opens his mouth, and nothing comes out. The lack of voice acting in this moment is awkward, and the text box sound effect is way louder than the crowd, making it more awkward still. It's a moment that's supposed to be exciting and get the player pumped to get into the game, but it falls flat, and that ended up being an omen for the experience to come. Legends Arceus also has a moment right at the beginning that set the tone for me. Professor Laventon leads you through the village to take you to his boss. You're following him willingly, and you have free control of the character and the camera. As you walk, the townsfolk whisper to each other. They know you came from the rift, and they're both surprised and suspicious. This moment was huge for me. It seems like a very simple scene, especially to anyone not familiar with these games, but when you consider just how firmly in its rut Pokemon had been stuck, and how much trouble it had breaking away from its simpler handheld roots, this scene speaks volumes. Walking through a town with camera control, 
characters reacting to you as you pass. An important story beat happening through actual gameplay instead of a simple cutscene. Establishing that there's something wrong with the world and that there's immediate friction between the player and other characters, rather than the usual empowering optimistic adventure beginning. It's still basic video game stuff, sure. And yeah, there's still no voice acting, which we'll touch on later. But in the context of Pokemon, it communicated to me that this wasn't going to be just another Pokemon game. This was different. And different Legends Arceus indeed is. We'll come back to the story and all that later, because first we need to talk about the new gameplay mechanics, which form the foundation of this new experience. Heck, I don't even think I can just call them mechanics. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay has been entirely overhauled. Pokemon has always very firmly been an RPG series. Very little action, everything turn-based, no quick thinking required. There's a place for games like that, and they're certainly more broadly accessible, but personally, I felt the formula was missing something. Everything just felt like numbers. There's no danger. This isn't a real world. It's all just little bundles of stats spawning in zones. Let's Go introduced the concept of seeing Pokemon on the overworld, and Sword and Shield expanded on the idea. These came closer to making Pokemon feel more quote-unquote real to me, and that was what I liked about them. It was too easy to imagine a future game where you were creeping through the grass, sneaking up on Pokemon for easier catches. The absolute most fun I had with Sword and Shield was one part of the DLC where you have to chase down a Galarian Zapdos in order to fight and catch it. I mean, actually chasing a Pokemon? <laughs> like it's real and I'm in a world where Pokemon are living creatures that you physically have to find and catch? It was a taste of the Pokemon game I wanted. And if that was a taste, Legends Arceus is the buffet. There are zero random encounters in this game, not even in the grass, and I could not be happier. Pokemon no longer spawn and despawn constantly as you move around, like in Sword and Shield. They roam their areas, at least somewhat naturally. Sometimes they even sleep, and they make the most adorable little sound when they do it. It's too much. I do think there's a ton of room for improvement here. I'd like to see a lot more behaviors so they're not just you know, standing around waiting for you to catch them. But it's still such a massive step in the right direction that it's hard to complain. It still feels so much more like I'm looking at creatures in a natural environment. And exploring this environment is so comfortable. Now, there is never a time when the camera is fixed. None of the awkward switching back and forth from Sword and Shield. This alone makes me feel like Game Freak has finally made that leap to full home console games. At no point does it make you go, was this originally going to be on the 3DS? <laughs> And if you want to talk about game changers, you can now freely aim and throw Pokeballs. A big part of the experience is throwing Pokeballs to catch Pokemon without even battling them first. This is a concept that goes against what I've always understood about Pokemon. You weaken a Pokemon before you catch it. That's how it's always done, right? Let's Go brought the concept of catching without battling to the mainline games, and I was iffy about it. It did open up the whole idea of catching lots of each type of Pokemon, which came with its own perks, but it was still pretty weird to me. So when I saw early footage of Legends Arceus, I was once again iffy. If you don't even battle a Pokemon first, where's the satisfaction in catching it? Well, I can finally say that Past Arlo can firmly shut his blue mouth and go sit in the wrong chair for being a guy who is wrong. Throwing Pokeballs in this game feels amazing. I mean, you're actually throwing them instead of selecting them from a menu. You're manually walking up to a Pokemon and throwing a Pokeball at it. There's a very convenient lock-on feature for Pokemon that are close enough, but you can always free aim if you need to. The audio-visual feedback when you hit your target is very satisfying, especially if you're taking a risky shot from a great distance. Catching has always been one of my favorite things to do in Pokemon, and now I get to do it 
constantly. Catching without battling isn't a problem in the slightest because there are still plenty of instances where you do battle, and because catching helps you in lots of ways, which we'll talk more about later. Oh, and it gets even better. You don't just throw Pokeballs to catch wild Pokemon. You also throw Pokeballs to send out your own Pokemon. If you want to get into a battle, you literally throw your selected fighter. This might not seem like a big deal to a lot of people, maybe even most people. I don't even know if other Pokemon fans feel this way. The thing is though, I, I've got something to admit. I'm a grown man. You know, not, not even like a, like a young adult who was a kid so recently that there are still some kid things left over that I haven't outgrown yet. No, I'm like a full blown grown up. And even today, it is not uncommon for me to daydream that I'm throwing Pokeballs. Like in my everyday life. I mean, I watched so much of the anime. I spent so much of my childhood imagining that Pokemon was real. So I like to pretend I'm throwing Pokeballs when no one's looking. You know, sending out my own awesome Pokemon to do stuff for me, catching imaginary Pokemon in my house, catching the toaster or the TV, or maybe even a housemate when their back is turned. <laughs> There's just something so tactile and satisfying about the concept. It's ingrained in me. And this game allows me to live out my dream of being a Pokemon trainer, running around and just throwing balls everywhere, pumping my fist when I nab a rare Pokemon, sending out my best fighter to save me from a rampaging Ursaring. It's never felt this real, and it's certainly never felt this absurdly fun. Not even close. I've always loved games where your Pokemon can run along with you for immersion related reasons that are probably obvious. This game naturally can't allow that because you do need to move around quickly and do a lot of sneaking and stuff, and a follower would probably complicate things a good bit. But the game makes up for it by letting you just kind of throw out your Pokemon whenever you want, even if there's nothing to fight. Out in the wilderness, in town, wherever. I was exceptionally delighted to learn that you can send them all out at once and they hang out and look like they're talking with each other. If you throw a Pokemon at an NPC, they'll even pop out to say hello. It's a relatively small detail, but one that does so much to strengthen my emotional attachment to these creatures. As with so many things in this game, it feels like a 25 year dream come true. Let's talk more about wild Pokemon encounters. Like I said, Let's Go and Sword and Shield had me dreaming of a game where you could sneak up on wild Pokemon, and Legends Arceus is that exact dream realized. At any time, you can crouch down and move slowly so you make less noise, and hiding in grass naturally makes it harder for Pokemon to see you. From there, you can either throw a Pokeball to try and catch something, or engage in a battle. And of course, if you enter a battle, you do the whole turn-based thing that we're all familiar with, which we'll cover later. If you choose not to enter a battle, any aggressive Pokemon will attack you, and you'll likely have to use the new dodge roll to get out of the way. All of this sounds simple enough on paper, but it's the execution that makes all the difference. There are so many details that all work together to make this into a fresh, exciting experience. It's always up to you to decide how you want to approach a wild Pokemon. Its placement, your placement, the surrounding environment, and any other nearby Pokemon all factor into that decision. Can you get to that patch of grass without being seen? What do you do if there's no nearby grass at all? If the Pokemon breaks out of the ball, is it going to spot you and attack you, or is it going to run away and rob you of your chance to catch? Of course, since you can now manually throw Pokeballs, there's a considerable margin of error when going for a catch. If you miss your throw, a Pokemon might realize you're there, and of course you waste your ball. There's that handy lock-on feature when you're close enough, but the option to aim on your own opens up all sorts of crazy throw attempts. Like I said, nailing a shot from a great distance feels awesome. Very cleverly, hitting a Pokemon in the back makes it more likely to be caught, and this makes an intensely satisfying noise and visual effect to let you know you nailed it. Similarly, if you engage in a battle by hitting an entirely unaware Pokemon in the back, you take it by surprise and get a few extra turns on it before it realizes what's going on. This is also quite clever because it means that stealth is a good option even when you have no intention to go for a clean catch. 
I can't stress enough how immersive all this makes the game feel. It's still a Pokemon game. You're getting Pokemon, you're fighting with them, you're training them up, trying to remember all your type matchups. But it's all so much better when a Pokemon encounter is something exciting, something tricky, something that requires more than just riding your bike back and forth through the grass. It doesn't feel like something has been added to the formula. It feels like something inevitable has been unlocked. It feels like the concept is finally reaching its potential. It's an entire facet of the experience that fits so perfectly and feels so right that it might have always been this way in another timeline where Pokemon didn't start on the Game Boy. Pokemon Legends Arceus isn't a strictly open world game, seeing as its different areas are separate from one another. However, it does share a lot of DNA with open world games. You can explore each area however you wish and spend as little or as much time as you want between the main quest and side content. More importantly though, like any good open world game, it gives you a dynamic world and the tools to interact with that world and tells you to go. The result of this is that more than any Pokemon game before it, Legends Arceus creates stories. Look at Breath of the Wild versus previous Zeldas. Whereas before, any two people playing a Zelda game were likely to have very similar experiences at the end of the day, Breath of the Wild set players up to stumble upon their own unique stories. The openness of the design, the complex physics, the systems that all work together, the wealth of damage options, it all combined to make for an experience that would be significantly different for every person. Legends Arceus is very similar. The variability of throwing a Pokeball, the importance of your character's movement, the differing temperaments of wild Pokemon, the landscape, all the different items and strategies at your disposal, it's a game that you can swap stories with your friends over, and those stories are ultimately what stick with me most when I play a game. Those memories are the ones I look back on with the most fondness. One aspect of the game that very much helps create stories and adds to that precious feel I'm always going on about is its difficulty. To bring up Breath of the Wild once again, that game understood the value of a challenge. I'm kinda tired of playing games where I'm railroaded gently through the world, presented with a very gradually rising difficulty curve as I myself also gradually get stronger and better at playing. Nah, I wanna die sometimes. <laughs> Few things in any Zelda game have felt better to me than facing a Lionel or a Stone Talus that I had no chance of beating, being forced to give up, then coming back later to best it. And actually, seeing high-level Pokémon was another one of the things I liked about Sword and Shield. Sometimes in the wild area, I would get into encounters with Pokémon that would wipe out my team if I wasn't careful. Of course, this wasn't as satisfying as it could be, seeing as I couldn't catch any of them without the right badges, and the fear of getting wiped out was only thanks to the game arbitrarily telling me I couldn't escape a battle. Once more, Legends Arceus fully develops the idea. Now we've got Alpha Pokémon, which are extra big, extra beefed up, and extra high level. They are incredibly aggressive, which makes trying to catch them so much more scary and exciting. Even in the first area, there are a few Alpha Pokémon that will destroy you if you're not careful. Just like the Lionel or the Talus, finally catching that gigantic high-level Snorlax on the beach is now one of my favorite Pokémon memories. Being scared of something and knowing you can't even put a scrape on it, then eventually beating it by a hair? It just feels awesome. That's not a feeling I've gotten to experience in a Pokémon game before now. I'm not avoiding that area over there because I don't have cut yet or something, but because there's a big stinking Rapidash and it's gonna kill me! Oh man, and speaking of that, it's difficult for me to express how much of a difference it makes that your character can take damage. It's another thing that makes the world feel real, instead of like a simulation where robots fight each other and humans can't do anything themselves. But then it's perfect because it also brings a lot to the table mechanically. Going into the game, I was a little worried that these real-time encounters would be way too easy. But I was wrong! Wild Pokémon are savage! They will launch at you very suddenly and with frightening speed! Their attacks will zero in on you, requiring split-second dodging to avoid. And if lots of Pokémon are ganging up on you and you don't hightail it out of there, it's all too easy to have your clock thoroughly cleaned. 
If you get knocked out, you lose a bunch of items, so there's very much incentive to stay safe. One great thing about being able to take damage yourself is that getting knocked out is now your default failure state. In older Pokemon games, if all your Pokemon faint, you're forced to go back to a Pokemon Center because without Pokemon, you simply can't do anything. You can't get into wild encounters. You can't be challenged by trainers. Nothing works. But now that the player has so many tools at their disposal, we're finally allowed to keep on going after our team gets wiped out. Because you've still got to get away from this aggressive Pokemon, right? You've still got to escape without getting knocked out and either use some items or rest before you can use your Pokemon again. The game doesn't have to force us to do anything anymore. We've been given more ways to protect ourselves, and with that has come more responsibility. It's very freeing not being so beholden to the rule that you have to have an active Pokémon with you no matter what. Furthermore, it's good that Pokémon can be so aggressive and that your frail little human body can only take so much abuse, because this creates a great risk and reward system when you're trying to catch an angry alpha. If you're lucky enough to nab one without a fight, then great! If you're in trouble, you can send out your own Pokémon to do the fight for you, and of course this lets you whittle down your opponent's health and make it easier to catch. But if you're properly equipped and willing to get your hands dirty, you can throw certain items to try and stun them temporarily so you can go for that quick catch anyway. Sometimes this can take a good number of hits, so your dodges and your throws have both got to be accurate. And on that note, while alphas can be tough, nothing compares to noble Pokémon. These normally docile protectors of their respective domains have been thrown into a frenzy thanks to some weird nacho-cheesy rift lightning, and you have got to calm them down. As with a few other things by now, before playing the game, I didn't quite understand these battles. Why would I throw stuff at a giant angry Pokémon instead of just fighting it? Well, it turns out you actually do both, and in practice, it makes perfect sense. You've got to hit a noble Pokémon with these bombs to calm it down. If you manage to exploit or create an opening, you can then send in your own Pokémon to battle. Get the noble's HP all the way down, and you get an even greater opening to throw a ton of bombs and bring the angry meter or whatever it is down a lot. This back and forth between real-time and turn-based combat is exhilarating. It gives this sense that you really are taking on an incredibly powerful foe and using your team to systematically bring it down. And I gotta tell you, these battles can be really, really tough. I mean, you're playing a Pokémon game, but you're using the iframes of your dodge roll to narrowly escape these gigantic attacks like it's stinking Monster Hunter or something? Again, it's an experience unlike anything we've ever seen in a mainline Pokémon game, yet it absolutely fits. My Pokémon have been exclusively fighting for me for 25 years now. It feels great to get right in on that action myself, that danger, that feeling of being gloriously alive and, of course, the triumph when my foe is bested. It's like Pokémon has got real, honest-to-goodness boss battles for the first time ever! Now, these battles aren't nearly as taxing as, say, a battle in something like Monster Hunter, but I do think they strike a good balance of difficulty. I'm a decently experienced player, and I didn't get knocked out until the final boss, but I had many close calls. And even when I wasn't losing, I was still trying very, very hard not to lose. Even without constant failure, just needing to put in a lot of effort feels great. Seriously, these noble battles are some of the best parts of the whole game. They're so much fun! I do wish there were more of them, but look at that! After you beat the main story, you can rematch them as many times as you want, and they're even harder. Perfect! Okay, let's stop beating around the bush and talk about combat. The core Pokémon combat is mostly intact here, but there are some really great changes to how things work. Before I talk about new mechanics, though, there are so many more subtle changes that radically transform Pokémon into something so, so much better than it's ever been. The entire battle system has gotten a major makeover, and I couldn't possibly be happier about it. First, let's talk about combat speed. The agonizingly slow combat in the other modern Pokémon games made me want to pull my hair out. And I got a lot of hair. <laughs> All the unnecessary pauses between actions and the little messages about status effects and weather and all that stuff. I hated it. There was absolutely zero reason for it to be that way beyond trying to emulate how it was on the Game Boy for some ridiculous reason. No, it was nonsense 
and I hated it. But combat in Legends Arceus is so much faster. Info comes quickly now. They've shaved off all the little pauses. It's all very zippy and fluid. And good golly gosh, Gravy, I cannot even tell you how happy I am. I mean, this one thing alone makes the game infinitely more playable than basically every other Pokemon game ever for me. Oh, but things only get better from here, my friends. Gosh, it almost brings a tear to my eye to say this, but you know how in Pokemon, when you get into a battle, you like, go to the battle place, which is supposed to like, represent where you are without actually being where you are? That just doesn't happen here. You get into a fight and you battle right there. Entering and exiting combat is quick, smooth, and entirely seamless. Here's one change to combat that simply blew my mind. I mean, this is one of those things that really knocked my socks off when I first booted up the game and made me so glad I didn't watch too much footage before release. Okay, so you're in a battle, right? You can move around. <laughs> You could just kind of move around. This lets you survey the battle from any angle and position yourself however you like, which does more for the feel of the game than I can describe. I'm not just the person moving around the menus anymore. I'm a Pokemon trainer. I'm right there in the battle. And this is so much more cinematic. Something about standing up on a rock or a hill while my Pokemon does battle down below. I don't know what it is. It's just... <laughs> It's a thing. It's one of those deep down special things that just feels so cool, so right. It makes it feel real. What more could I say? Gosh, you can even run away from battles just by running away. Like you just sort of run away and the battle ends. Because why wouldn't you be able to run from a battle? What does couldn't get away even mean? Like I said earlier, we've been given these new abilities and now we can take things like running away into our own hands. And if I run from a battle and the wild Pokemon blasts me as I go, then that's just what happens. What was once merely represented by text is now a real thing that you do. It's so cool. Still more coolness though, tying the camera to the player instead of having an active camera that does whatever it wants is a very big change to combat in itself, and it actually makes everything feel cooler. You would think that nothing could beat a camera that was programmed with all these cool cuts and pans and stuff to make the action feel more exciting, right? Nah, nothing feels better than watching Pokemon blast each other from whatever angle I want. It makes the effects seem more crazy and exciting somehow. Yet another thing that aids in this combat feel is that Pokemon are no longer rooted to the spot. They can move around to fit the situation, which helps when you're not battling on level ground. Sure, it's a little silly when they can't seem to find a good spot and kind of push each other around, but that's a small price to pay if you ask me. And gosh, did I mention that Pokemon actually move around to hit each other now? Because if you want to talk about making combat feel good visually, that also works wonders. The whole thing just feels natural. I, I don't know how many times I can say this, but yeah, real. I can't stop using that word. I know none of this is real, and it's not even very impressive on a technical level, but seeing it in Pokemon is such a delight. Okay, let's get to the practical stuff. The most notable change to combat in Legends Arceus is that instead of turns just going back and forth, now you've got this list that shows you the turn order. Once you've mastered a move, you can choose to use it in Agile Style or Strong Style, both of which cost two PP instead of one. Naturally, Agile Style is faster and weaker, whereas Strong Style is stronger and slower. It's not just a simple matter of getting one more or one fewer turns, however. It all depends on the speed of your Pokemon, which makes the speed stat more important than ever. It's no longer as easy as being like, eh, my Pokemon's a big guy, speed's not his thing, he'll just tank the hit and go second. Because under the right circumstances, one Pokemon can get even more than two turns in a row. And if you're going up against more than one Pokemon simultaneously, which is totally a thing that can happen now, by the way, low speed can be quite dangerous. It's great that the two new styles allow more flexibility. You can give your slow Pokemon a speedier edge when needed, and your fast Pokemon some extra juice to help land a finishing blow at just the right time. But I was really pleased to see that moves themselves also have speed values. Some moves are simply faster or slower, often resulting in a change in the turn order. 
Quick Attack is no longer just a move that goes first. Instead, now it's a move that's likely to net you an extra turn because it's naturally fast. Hyper Beam doesn't strictly require a turn for recharging, it just slows down the turn order. It's a really natural progression of the systems already in place, and it fits with the series so much more than I anticipated. When I first heard about it, it sounded a little tacked on, or maybe just not very substantial. But once more, I find myself needing to have a seat in the wrong chair. Obviously, I'm very happy to have more to think about in battle. Extra layers of strategy is exactly what Pokémon's combat needed. But I also like some of the other changes that result from this new system. Being able to always go first if you're using an item, or having the option to switch your Pokémon after knocking out an opponent. Apparently, we all took those things for granted because they're just not a thing anymore. If your opponent is too much faster than you, they'll just keep on taking them turns and you can't do a thing until they're done. When you knock out a Pokemon in a trainer battle, now it's their turn to choose just the right Pokemon to take yours down. It can make you feel pretty helpless when your Pokemon are fainting one by one and you don't even have a chance to use a revive or something, and that can be frustrating, but that just means you've gotta do a better job of preparing your team for battle and not facing off against opponents who are above your skill level. I I also recognize that this new system isn't quite ready for PvP yet because it's probably too easy to abuse and imbalance, but I'm confident that it can be refined and made to work in the future. In addition to this whole speed thing, there are tons of little changes to how combat works that I did not expect. Like I said, you can now face off against more than one Pokémon at a time. If you get into a fight with an angry wild Pokémon and its friends are close enough, they'll join in. Yet another thing that makes the world feel more real, because it just makes sense. Why would they all wait their turn? They're wild, they're angry, and they're all ganging up on you because of course they are. This raises the stakes and stops you from getting off easy when you're trying to nab only one Pokemon from a pack. Status effects have been changed quite drastically. Sleep is now drowsy and works more like confusion. Frozen is now Frostbite, which works more like Poison. Lots of moves leave Splinters, which also work like Poison. Instead of Evasion and Accuracy, now Pokémon can have the Obscured effect, which makes them harder to hit. No status effects persist after battle anymore. Lots of stuff. And another change I really like is how the game handles buffs and debuffs. Now offensive stats and defensive stats are coupled. If you raise your attack, you raise your attack and special attack simultaneously. If you lower an opponent's defense, both defense and special defense go down. I've always known that buffs and debuffs can be useful, but I've never been able to get myself to use them. With this change, however, they're so much more useful, so I'm way more likely to actually depend on them. Also, they only last a few turns now, so you're not likely to get stuck in a situation where an opponent has buffed so much that you can't lay a finger on them. Ah, but they can still have passive buffs. An alpha will be buffed as a default, and if you try and fail to catch a Pokémon, they become enraged and all their stats go up. So many fun little details, so many changes, and honestly, I think I like all of them. There are more changes to how things work outside of combat as well. Sometimes a game series will put certain restrictions on things to make them feel more impactful and force you to think harder about what you're doing. Then over time, these restrictions will be eased up, or sometimes even removed entirely, and it will do wonders to help the series feel fresh again. And it's not even that the restrictions were necessarily bad, it's just nice to have a change. That's exactly what happened to Pokémon moves. It used to be you got one chance to teach a Pokémon a move, and when you deleted a move, it was gone forever. Then they eased things up and let us relearn moves, but we had to have a special item to do it. Then of course there's the whole TM thing. They're expendable. Now they're not. Now they are. Well, you know what? It's all out the window now. No TMs. They're gone. Don't need them anymore. You can now change your Pokémon's moves on the fly. Yeah, anytime you want. Once they get an idea for a move, they've always got it in their pool. And if you want them to learn new moves, you take them to the nice lady and pay her to teach them. I can appreciate the previous restrictions, but wow, I'm so glad it's become so easy. It's so freeing and it allows for tons of experimentation. And even the process of Pokemon getting new ideas for moves has been streamlined. The game no longer stops you to make you figure out your moves on the spot. You just get a little notification when a Pokemon 
Pokemon is thought of a new move, and you can deal with it whenever you like. Similarly, Pokemon no longer spontaneously evolve when the requirements are met. You get a notification, and it's up to you to go and evolve them at your leisure. I will admit, it does remove some of that excitement of finishing a battle and being taken to the cutscene and being like, oh my gosh, it's time! But that's another very small price to pay, considering how convenient and refreshing this new system is. Speaking of evolution, it's way easier to achieve in this game. Evolution items are plentiful and easy to find, and items that previously required holding and trading now simply work like evolution stones. You just use them and bam, you got yourself an evolved Pokemon. There's even a Link Cable item for the four Gen 1 trade evolution Pokemon. Again, I can appreciate how interesting the old method was and how it encouraged people to get together, but this is so easy and I think we've all earned it. Oh, and you want to talk about quality of life changes? You want to talk about quality of life changes? Well, I gotta tell you something. I hate the EV system. Pokemon as a whole became 84% less fun the moment I learned about it. I mean, creating an invisible marker so that different Pokemon have different stats so they feel unique? Yeah, it's kind of a cool idea. But then everyone figured it out and it became like snaking in old Mario Kart. You do it or you lose. Plain and simple. If you don't EV train your Pokemon, they're going to be comparatively weak. It doesn't matter as much when you're playing solo like I tend to, but the feeling that I'm nerfing my Pokemon by not properly training them is always hanging over my head. Since the process of EV training was so, so tedious, Game Freak had to keep giving players more and more tools to streamline the process, which was just silly to me. It made me wonder why they were still using the system at all. Well, my wish to simply be done with the whole thing has finally come true. I don't know if EVs are gone forever, but they are gone in Arceus. Now instead, we have the Grit system. You use Grit items to boost your Pokemon stats. You don't have to choose just the right stats or worry about messing up a build because every Pokemon can be boosted the same amount in every stat. Doing this quite simply makes your Pokemon stronger. It's simple, it's intuitive, it's easy, and now instead of feeling like an exploit built for more serious players, it's something everyone will naturally be led to do. The boosting isn't free by any means because the better grit items are harder to come by, but that of course just makes it all the more satisfying to get your hands on them. And Pokemon like to leave grit items behind when you release them, which ties in with the new catching system and gives you all the more reason to catch lots and lots of Pokemon. I don't know, maybe bigger Pokemon fans find this system too simple, but I absolutely love it. It turns what I feel is a silly, antiquated system into something that's, you know, actually fun. <laughs> so that's a lot of changes, right? I, I mean, Legends Arceus does not play around when it comes to tweaking this ancient formula. The way I see it though, a lot of these changes haven't been made simply for the sake of change. Swapping out moves, evolving quickly and easily, boosting stats as needed. It all supports the game's primary focus, which we haven't talked about yet, the Pokedex. In all my Pokemon playing years, there was exactly one time I was semi-interested in completing the Pokedex, and that was in 1998. Yeah, Gen 1. There were only 150 Pokemon. I collectively played red, blue, and yellow for about 16 bajillion hours. The slogan was, gotta catch them all. It made sense that I might want to actually make that happen. But every link cable I ever owned worked exactly one time before breaking permanently for some reason, so I never got around to trading for the version-specific Pokemon I needed, and that was that. After that point, well, but let's just say, I haven't exactly felt inspired to try again. But now, filling out the Pokedex isn't just integral to the experience. It's also so much fun! For the first time in the mainline series, you're not only a trainer. Your primary job is researcher. 
You're part of the Survey Corps. Each Pokémon has a page in the decks with a series of tasks to accomplish, often with multiple thresholds. Catch a certain number, catch a certain number without being seen or during a certain time of day. Observe the Pokémon using a certain move, acquire multiple forms, lots of stuff. A system like this runs the risk of overwhelming or boring a player with tasks they don't feel like accomplishing, but in my eyes, the game has struck a perfect balance. Filling out dex entries always earns your rewards, you're constantly ranking up your research level, and of course, it's just fun to fill out little checkboxes sometimes. If you're really into grinding out some checkboxy work, there's a ton here for you. If that's not really your thing, you don't have to focus too much on it. You'll earn plenty of research points by just catching and battling a good amount. The game never requires you to engage in anything too tedious, but is there to reward you when those boxes do get checked. And it just feels so good to care about my Pokedex. I open it to check stuff all the time, and not only watching it fill up with entries, but also watching those entries themselves fill up. It's a delight. And it's especially nice having a goal that ties in so well with the story and your character's place in it. Being a researcher is my job, and I can see how that job is affecting the people around me. Speaking of old ideas that now feel much more important, let's talk items. I know many people will roll their eyes whenever crafting is introduced into an established series, and I know that crafting isn't always the right choice for a game, but I feel like it's perfect for Pokémon! The series has always been about adventure, about making your own way in the world, so it only makes sense that you learn how to make your own stuff. A real adventurer wouldn't only find items lying all over the place, they would happen upon and collect materials and various natural resources. And in any Pokémon game, you do a lot of battling, so you're gonna want things like potions and status heals and all that, which is already reason enough to want to craft things on the fly. But then this game has you going through a ton of Pokéballs, so it's both convenient and empowering to craft those yourself as well. And the game's other new mechanics and various quests and whatnot utilize brand new kinds of items, so there's no shortage of reasons to gather materials and craft. And gosh, the difference between gathering raw materials and turning them into useful items versus just casually flying to the store and stocking up on Ultra Balls and Hyper Potions every once in a while is staggering. I'll say it, I'll say the thing, it feels more real. It's more immersive and engaging in every way. Now that we've talked about the core gameplay and all the new ideas and changed mechanics and all that, it's finally time to talk about how it all knits neatly together and what that accomplishes. No, I don't mean how real it makes everything feel. <laughs> this is less of an immersion thing and more of a raw enjoyability thing. When you mix all this stuff together, the catching, the decks, the real-time encounters, the smooth transitions in and out of battle, the gathering and crafting, everything, it creates an impeccable gameplay flow. Say it with me, flow. That's the word of the day. The stark contrast between overworld and battle is now gone. The complete lack of anything more than directional inputs when on the overworld is a thing of the past. The little pauses that occur when finding items have left the building. When you're out there on the field, you move fluidly from one task to the next. You can improvise, wandering an area and following leads as you see fit. You spot a Pokemon you want, you catch it. Maybe you sneak up in the grass first, or maybe you just go for it. But the whole thing happens quickly. Then you're immediately off doing something else. You see a rock, so you chuck one of your Pokémon over to break it, and it returns to you with the materials, all without you even stopping or changing course. Then maybe you get into a battle where you can still move around all you want, and when it's done, you're simply back to exploring right where you left off. Then you find an alpha Pokémon, and you have to dodge away from its attacks while you throw mud balls at it, and eventually you nab it with a back strike. Then you turn around and see some more Pokémon to catch, then some more items to collect. You fill out entries in your decks as you do all this, but the little pop-ups don't interrupt the gameplay, nor do the pop-ups when your Pokémon learn moves or become evolvable. Nothing stops you from moving. Nothing interrupts the fun. It's just running and sneaking and throwing and dodging and collecting constantly. It's the flow. It's the groove, you know? It just feels so satisfying and so right, and it makes the game incredibly hard to put down. It's doubly hard to put down because of how the game's systems all feed into each other. 
Gathering lets you craft, which lets you catch, which fills out your decks and nets you rewards, which lets you catch, and battle, which fills out your decks and makes you stronger, which lets you battle more and catch more, and catching also gets you grit items, which lets you battle more, which lets you explore more, which lets you gather more, which lets you catch more, and I think you can see what I'm getting at here. In my eyes, more than any other Pokemon game, Arceus gives us a heck of a strong feedback loop. And that loop just keeps going and going and going until it's three o'clock in the morning and you still can't stop. I in the same way that I'm getting a little tired of using the word real, I'm also getting a little tired of being like, even better, but my gosh, there are just so many even betters here. Can you tell I really like this game? Well, even better. While Arceus may not be a strictly open world game, the designers did a wonderful job kind of treating it like it was and giving the player things to do along those lines. There's already lots to do even when you're just looking at the main mechanics, but extra stuff helps to flesh things out even further. One side quest has you collecting these wisps, which are spread out across the whole world. Yes, find all the whatevers is a really obvious thing to have the player do in your big open game, and I don't care, I like it. Even better though, is hunting for all the missing unknowns. Each one is out there somewhere in these great big areas, often hiding in really cute and clever places. Finding one never failed to put the biggest grin on my face. It's another relatively simple game of hide and seek, and yet it's so effective and fun. It's another little touch of magic to help me really remember the game by. Then like any open-ish world game, you've got requests. Townsfolk ask you for all sorts of stuff, and look at that, more reason to get out there and do stuff and find stuff. Collecting items, finding people, filling out specific dex pages, all sorts of stuff. And as with filling out the dex itself, you can engage as little or as much as you want here. If some requests seem a little too tedious, don't do them. You won't be missing out on much. If you love ticking every box on your log, well, you got your work cut out for you. And in addition to simply giving you stuff to do, lots of these requests are fun in their own right. Working through these requests will teach you about the townsfolk and give you fun little scenarios to work through. Many NPCs even feed you little ongoing side stories by having you return multiple times throughout the campaign. I was initially a little disappointed to learn that the game only has one town, but this actually ended up being something of a strength because the smaller cast allows for more familiarity. I care about some of these NPCs more than I care about the major characters from previous games. More cool stuff to do out on the field, they really decided to play with this whole space-time rift concept by having distortions appear randomly on the map. These are big, crazy, lightning-filled domes that spawn all sorts of Pokémon, including ones from other regions and times in history. And every single Pokémon that pops up in a distortion is extremely, extremely aggressive. Rare items also spawn all over the ground, making these distortions very attractive but boy oh boy, they can be dangerous. Hunkering down in some grass and suddenly finding yourself surrounded by a bunch of super strong Pokemon who are very eager to kill you is terrifying. And as with alphas, the very idea of being scared of the Pokemon around me is pure magic. Being in a situation like this, my heart pumping, trying to decide if I should run away, wondering if I even can run away, well, I've felt a lot of things while playing Pokemon games, but I can't say terrified is one that's come up much. But this game has a way of making me feel scared, of putting me right there in the action and forcing me to fear for myself. And what can I say? That's just awesome. Still more, with such big areas to explore, it's not only convenient that they gave us mounts so we can move around more quickly. The different mounts actually aid in exploring new areas and open up new gameplay possibilities. Earning the ability to swim or climb or fly naturally opens up new paths and lets you interact with the world in different ways. The mounts each have their own perks, so there isn't any one single perfect mount that's better than the rest. And thankfully, they made it very easily to instantly get on and off your mount, and to swap between them. There's no cutscene where you play your whistle or anything like that, and you don't have to worry about where your mounts actually are. You just hit that button and boom, you're on. Run into the water and boom! Boom, you're automatically switched to your ghost fishy. 
It's fast and fluid, and predictably, it plays perfectly into the flow I was talking about. Ooh, here's another thing that makes exploring better. Yeah, another thing. So, shinies. Pokemon with alternate color palettes and cool little sparkles when they enter battle. They've always been pretty darn rare, but Arceus makes them way easier to find. The clever thing is though, the encounter rate is exactly the same, but the new encounter system changes everything. Whereas you used to have to run around in the grass and enter into a long, annoying encounter in order to roll those dice even one time, now Pokemon are spawning all around you all the time. Furthermore, completing a Pokemon's dex entry raises your chances of finding shinies further. Also, sometimes you'll find outbreaks, where lots of a certain species of Pokemon will spawn in a small area, and this also increases the chances of finding a shiny. Once more, I feel they've struck a perfect balance here. Shinies were so rare before that some people never saw any, and hunting them on purpose was a grueling affair. But now anyone will likely have a nice little handful of shinies by the end of the game. And hunting them on purpose can still be an ordeal, but it's loads easier. Similarly to how they changed the EV system to the grit system, here they've created a new system that's a lot more approachable and fun for a relative casual like myself. And even on top of everything else the game has to offer, the fact that at any moment you might hear that little chime and see that little sparkle that tells you a shiny Pokemon is nearby adds yet another layer of excitement and possibility. Plus, those darn outbreaks are another thing that make it hard to put the game down. Whenever you see one on the map, you just never know if it's gonna lead you to a shiny. Ooh, I like that Pokemon. Well, maybe I'll just check out this one outbreak. Then I'll go to bed. Ah, uh, nothing there. Oh, but now there's an outbreak of those too. Oh, well, maybe just one more. So at the beginning of the review, I went over the game's setup, but let's talk more about that story. Like I said, this really isn't just a story set in the past. Everything revolves around the weirdo space-time rift that landed our character in Hisui. Everyone in the region is freaked out by it, it seems to be sending the Pokemon nobles into a frenzy, and all the hubbub is bringing things to the boiling point for two rival factions. In the middle of everything, Professor Laventon and the Research Corps are trying their best to figure out what's happening and put a stop to it. When examined more objectively, is it an amazing story? No. But I still found it highly enjoyable. One, it's something. <laughs> I've played plenty of Pokemon games, and they've all been pretty light on the story. Definitely some standout exceptions, but in my experience, even those are usually fairly rote. But here, we've got a central mystery that slowly unravels. We've got constant conflict between characters. We've got actual events and revelations that occur periodically to move things along. It's a story! Basically, not just a loose narrative thread to try and tie everything together. I genuinely enjoyed working through it. I genuinely wanted to get to the bottom of things. Two, and perhaps most importantly, the story works because the game works. When I'm enjoying what I'm doing, it's so much easier for me to tune into the plot and appreciate where it goes. I spend so much time with these characters that I actually care about them. They're not just yammering nobodies who pop up every couple towns to remind me that I'm supposed to be a Pokemon master. And the fact that this game takes place in the past really helps as well. Seeing the early days of Pokemon training is fascinating. Pokemon are so poorly understood that most people actually fear them, and you get to help the townsfolk discover how beneficial it is to work with Pokemon. By the end of the game, I actually felt like I'd grown a little attached to the town and its people, and even the world. Another reason the story and characters are more enjoyable this time around is that it feels like the team had more time to flesh things out. Playing Sword and Shield, all I could see were cut corners. But here, I found myself smiling at all sorts of little visual details. Yes, the animations are still a bit on the cheap side. Yes, the Pokemon company could easily afford to make it look better. But everything that's here works. It doesn't feel like the bare minimum. Like I said, no, there's still no voice acting, but it's not nearly as noticeable because characters look at each other and move and gesture and don't feel like a bunch of cheap talking heads. Things will happen in cutscenes and we'll actually actually see them instead of being told about them later. The game doesn't cut to black every time a Pokemon needs to do anything more than walk. Even when doing requests, there are plenty of nice little details to see. 
it's kind of sad being so appreciative that this feels like an actual game instead of a ridiculous rush job, but I'm trying to look at it positively. I know there are people at the Pokemon Company who care about all of these games and are doing the best they can with the time and resources they've got. The difference is that this time I can actually see that care. I see the care for the plot and characters. This feels like a story that someone wanted to tell. And speaking of all that, let's talk about the graphics. We're talking about a Pokemon game, and I know graphics are a point of contention here. I know a lot of people still think the game looks cheap, but I'm actually decently happy with how it looks. I'll completely admit, the raw graphical potential of the game is not even almost met. I mean, all we have to do is use Breath of the Wild as the standard for what a game world can look like on Switch. Legends Arceus simply does not look as good. Either the team is still figuring out how to make big home console games that look good, or they're just not given the time needed for polish, or maybe both. There are lots of rough edges here, lots of details that could use cleaning up. The game can be a little jaggy and muddy at times. And there's something wonky with the lighting, where you get this weird blue glow on rocks and stuff, which is pretty awkward. Overall though, nothing in the game looks outright bad. And in fact, the art style is strong enough to lift things up in many cases. And even the rougher elements look okay when everything is at the very least cohesive and consistent. Sorry to keep bringing up Sword and Shield, but those graphics were all over the place. Some stuff looked great, other stuff looked positively dreadful. The wild area in particular was incredibly hit or miss, and the overall aesthetic suffered for it. But here the world meshes quite well. The landscape actually looks like a landscape. The terrain looks much more organic. Land meets water in a more natural way. The weather changes more subtly. And the real test, when you blur your eyes, the game looks great. It's like looking at a cool landscape filled with Pokemon. Poorly done graphics will always stand out, but when I look at Arceus, I see a well-made world without quite as much polish and optimization as it could have used. And again, I'll settle for nice any day of the week as long as everything else is good too. Plus, there are plenty of visual elements that are just plain well done. Overall, it's a massive step up from what came before, at least when it comes to the overworld. I've spent an awfully long time praising Pokemon Legends Arceus, and I'm actually incredibly surprised that here, near the end of this very long review, I don't really have a lot of criticisms. I mean, I love outlining a game's flaws, even when I think it's a great game. But man, Arceus is so much fun so constantly that not a lot comes to mind when I think of weaknesses. If there was one single thing I kept wishing for throughout the game, it was more trainer battles. The focus of the game is primarily on wild Pokemon encounters, and with an overall lack of established Pokemon League or gyms or anything like that, there just aren't as many head-to-head -head battles as usual. Some of the battles we do get are positively phenomenal, especially later in the game. Epic, challenging, just plain fun. Then there are some trainers in town you can fight whenever you want, plus they did end up adding some more battles after launch, I think I just wanted at least a little more, you know? Especially because this game makes it so incredibly fun to build a team, that all the new immersion stuff helped me connect with my team on a deeper level, so I was always looking for someone to, you know, come along and test us out. Beyond that though, I just don't have any major complaints. Whenever a long running series is given a refresh, there will always be some casualties. And indeed, a few Pokemon series staples have been left out of Legends Arceus. Primarily, the game is missing breeding, held items, and abilities. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who were bummed by this, but honestly, I barely noticed the absence of these mechanics. And actually, as funny as this'll sound, I kinda like that they're not here. Let me explain. To me, a good sequel or entry in a series adds new stuff that works well with the pre-established gameplay. It doesn't necessarily keep all of the old stuff though. If something old doesn't quite mesh with the new stuff, or it's just not incredibly important, it might get put to the side. Sometimes this is permanent, but seeing as a long-running series will likely have many more iterations in the future, it's very often just temporary. And if a sequel is done right, you won't even mind that some stuff is missing. Especially 
especially considering that there's plenty of time for it to come back later. Not only do I not mind Arceus's missing features, I think it's fun that the devs managed to produce a satisfying entry without them, and I barely gave the whole thing a second thought. And I know that it's gonna be all the more exciting when those features return to make future games even better. And that right there is one of the things I love most about Pokemon Legends Arceus. It manages to do so much while still feeling like it's got tons and tons of room to grow. But that's not to say these areas feel like they're lacking per se. What we have here is still absolutely fun and satisfying. I just see that it can all be more. New mechanics, bringing back old ones, new stories, more movement options on the field, more of an open world structure, more realistic Pokemon behaviors. The sky's the limit. And that is an incredible place for a series to be. That is a triumph of game development, if you ask me. A complete package that stands on its own, but also feels like it's only the beginning of something so much better. It's like the first episode of a show you're instantly in love with. You're already enjoying yourself so much, and who even knows how many episodes and seasons might come next. Up until now, it seems that the Pokemon Company has tried very hard not to change up the mainline formula too much too fast. They've been incredibly conservative with new ideas, but frequently balancing things out by hastily yanking their toes from previously dipped waters. But Pokemon Legends Arceus is their Breath of the Wild moment. The game where they finally went, okay, let's rethink everything. Is it frustrating that they took so long to reach this point? Yes. Is it also frustrating that it feels like they were only allowed to refresh the series by creating a title that technically bears the mainline labeling but still feels a bit like a spinoff? And now we don't know how many traditional mainline games it will take for these new ideas to become standard if that even happens at all? Sure, yeah. At the time of this recording, we still don't know exactly how much of Arceus's DNA will be present in Scarlet and Violet, and since both games were in development at the same time, we have absolutely no idea what will carry over to the next generation. But at this moment, Pokemon Legends Arceus feels to me like the shackles have finally come off. It feels like Pokemon has finally been given permission to change and better itself. And the result is a game that genuinely feels like it's trying to be great. A game that builds upon what came before it in fun and interesting ways while paving new roads as well. And for me to go from being downright appalled by multiple Pokemon games to instantly falling in love with the latest one, that's a heck of a comeback if you ask me. Through all of the disappointments and controversies of the last few years, many have questioned if I actually like Pokemon at all. And you know what? I've asked myself the same thing. Do I really like Pokemon? Or am I only clinging to nostalgia, begging for the games to cater to my own changing tastes when it's clear that the series just isn't made for me anymore? Well, Legends Arceus has finally answered that question. Heck yes, I like Pokemon. I love Pokemon. If anything, Arceus has rekindled my love all over again. Throwing Pokeballs, catching cool mons, raising up a team, giving them silly names, going on adventures, beating bad guys. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And if this game is an indication of what the future of the series looks like, and they do continue to build upon the foundation they've laid out here, when future games launch, I'll be right there with everyone else, waiting up until midnight, clutching my Psyduck plushie, sipping flat, sparkling water out of Pikachu's head. Viva la Pokemon! Arceus has been out long enough that it's pretty easy to see reception has been mixed, which is... Disappointing, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little frustrating to really feel like the series is finally making a huge effort to evolve and improve, but not everyone agrees. But even if opinions differ on the specifics, it's at least good to see that things are indeed moving in the right direction. For the first time in years, I believe the future is bright for Pokemon. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you for watching and you have a great day. Hey, yeah!